He has uncovered uh, stuff for you. White House communications czar Anita Dunn. Let me say this again. We know the czars are all communists. We know that they shouldn't be in, empowered. They know they don't, they don't belong in the White House. We know that if we had a two-party system, there'd be an immediate investigation of every czar and they'd be thrown out. And the people who put him in would then be investigated. That, that's if we really had, a, really had a nation left. Here is White House communications czar Anita Dunn praising Mao Zedong in a speech to high school students at a graduation in June. Now remember, Mao Zedong was responsible for the deaths of 60 million Chinese people. Listen to this woman. Again, this is the czar of White House communications czar working for Obama. Listen. And then the third lesson and tip actually come from two of my favorite political philosophers, Mao Zedong and Mother Teresa, not often coupled with each other. But, but the two people that I turn to most to basically deliver a simple point, which is you're going to make choices, you're going to challenge, you're going to say why not. You're going to figure out how to do things that have never been done before. But here's the deal. These are your choices. They are no one else's. In So she's trying to brainwash the youth, in essence, to become members of the uh, Red Brigades, the same way the Biden-Mannhof gang did in Germany, the same way the uh, uh, illegitimate murderers in China did. And she is now the White House communications czar, Anita Dunn, praising Mao Zedong. Do you, do you understand what's going on in this country? And the Republicans are so clueless, they say nothing. Now, here's another liar. Larry Summers, formerly of Harvard University before he was thrown out, lying when he says that the $16 billion of stimulus money, that's, by the way, a, a, a spit in a bucket, created 30,000 jobs. It's a complete and total lie. Listen to this guy in 14. We saw data today for the first time uh, that showed that the first $16 billion of the stimulus uh, created over 30000 Director of the White House's National Economic Council, Larry Summers, claims that 30,000 jobs were created when everybody knows it's a lie. And the media says nothing about this. How in the world could this be going on? Answer. Beware the government media complex. Beware of the fact that we do not have a two-party system. We have a two-shell game going on. It's two-card Monty. Let's go back to what I said to you. The White House communications czar, Anita Dunn, speaks to a group of ignoramus pot smokers in a high school and tells them that one of her favorite political philosophers is Mao Zedong, and she links him up with Mother Teresa in order to confuse them into thinking that Mao Zedong was the male version of Mother Teresa. I want to remind you, Mao Zedong was a murderer, a mass murderer. He tortured and killed and starved to death over 60 million Chinese. And that's not made up by Michael Savage. It's according to the biographer of Mao Zedong, who is herself a mainland Chinese. She's in the White House. She's a czar. We have no two-party system. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Listen to clip 13 from the very same Maoist inside the White House. You don't have to accept the definition of how to do things, and you don't have to follow other people's choices and paths, okay? It is about your choices and your paths. You fight your own war. You lay out your own path. You figure out what's right for you. You don't let external definition define how good you are internally. You fight your war, you let them fight theirs. Everybody has their own path. Did you hear what this woman has just said to children? She's in the White House now, reports directly to Obama. She's the communication czar. Her name is Anita Dunn. She praises a mass murderer named Mao Zedong, and you have no idea why this is happening. Who listening to this show can argue after hearing the White House communications are Anita Dunn praising Mao Zedong, that I am wrong to be the Paul Revere of our time in warning you that we're far down the path of an absolute and total takeover. Anybody want to argue with that one? Does anyone listening to this show want to argue that Mao Zedong was good for the Chinese people? Why don't you step up to the plate and call this program? Because a major biography of Mao Zedong came out not too long ago, 500 or so pages, by a Chinese woman who lost her family to this Hitler of China. And she <clears throat> literally has the statistics. Just as 6 million Jews were killed in the Holocaust under Hitler, 60 million Chinese were either uh, beaten to death, 
starved to death or, sh or, or, or killed outright by Mao Zedong. So as I say to you, it's very important that you have to understand that if you value your freedom, you better listen to the savage nation. It's the story of the infiltration of the United States government at the highest levels, in my opinion. My opinion. If I don't know what I'm talking about, tell me, tell me where I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. You think it's good for a White House communication czar to praise Mao Zedong in a high school graduation, not George Washington? You think it's good for the director of the White House's National Economic Council, Larry Summers, who was thrown out of Harvard, to claim that the stimulus created 30,000 jobs when every economist who studied this says it's a lie? You're living in an absolute propaganda, a time of total propaganda, the government media complex. When you see that the White House communications are Anita Dunn speaks before a high school audience in June of this year and praises the mass murder of Mao Zedong and nothing happens then you understand how far gone this nation is. But it should tell you that, in fact, uh, Obama, now we know his variety of communism, the type he is, which is Maoist. We didn't know whether he was a Trotskyite, a Leninist, or a, of a, some other, let us say, species of communist. He is a Maoist. Why do I say that? Here is the same White House communication czar, Anita Dunn, who praises Mao Zedong in clip 12. In 1947, when Mao Zedong was being challenged within his own party on his plan to basically take China over, Chiang Kai-shek and the Nationalist Chinese held the cities, they had the army, they had the air force, they had everything on their side. And people said, how can you win? How can you do this? How can you do this against all of the odds against you? And Mao Zedong said, you, know, you fight your war, and I'll fight mine. If this doesn't put chills up the back of your spine, uh, nothing ever will. Now you're going to listen to Mao, um, Mao, Mao Tse Obama before the election when he said and slipped about what he has in mind with regard to a private military force, bigger, stronger, and better funded than the U.S. military. Do we have that one ready? We cannot, we cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. Um, the White House communication czar glorifies the mass murder of Mao Zedong. She tells school children that when he came to power, he did so over the army, over the military, over the Air Force. She teaches them with pride how this murderer took over China. Now, Mao Zedong, the Chinese communist dictator, without any shame, admitted early on that 800,000 of his fellow countrymen had been liquidated between 1949 and 1954. That was in the, in, in just in those years. He liquidated 800,000 of his fellow Chinese who were not sufficiently communist. Communist, communist doctrine often promises better housing. Communists often promise improved health care. Commun communists uh, promise improved social conditions. Communists promise uh, people to practice religion and peace. They promise justice, peace, and liberty. But at the end, it all leads to the same thing, the death squads, the death chambers. And if you remember Bill Ayers and his friends, who we try to warn you about, and it turns out now Bill Ayers wrote Obama's uh, uh, biography, autobiography. Bill Ayers and his friends talked about liquidating 30 million Americans. They would glad. You remember that one? You think I'm making this one up as well? Do you want us to get that little, little piece for you as well? So you understand how far we have fallen and the danger we are in? We still have the chance to save ourselves. In a year or two, you're not going to have it. The octopus is tightening its grip over every avenue of this country. The liberals are all drugged up and throwing themselves at Obama. They are vomiting their souls to this man. They have regurgitated whatever is left of their souls before the altar of this man.